Hi, I'm Chef Jonathan Collins. Welcome to my kitchen. Join me for six exciting episodes of Cuisinart Culinary School, and I'll prove you're not too busy to cook. Using only the freshest and best quality ingredients. Equipping your kitchen with stylish accessories and must-have gadgets, inspiring a return to the table. I'll teach you passionate, healthy, and simple cooking for your family. So what we gotta do is we gotta answering questions nice. about ingredients, techniques, recipes, and tools. Master French culinary basics, and you'll always cook with confidence. Every week, you'll have a chance to watch and win one of these powerful kitchen tools, all thanks to Cuisinart. There's nothing like fresh pasta. When you see how easy it is, you won't be able to stop making it. I'm going to use a food processor, my Cuisinart, which is powerful and can make and knead the dough. You can also do it by hand. It takes a little bit more time and some forearms, but let's get started and I'll show you how simple it is. First of all, 500 grams of all-purpose flour and five eggs. So an easy rule of thumb is if you want to make less, you can do 300 grams of flour and three eggs, 400 grams of flour and four eggs. So it's a really simple recipe. Five eggs in. I'm glad I'm not the cleanup crew and just a spot of olive oil. Also, a pinch of salt. I'm gonna close that up and just pulse it to start. And that just begins to bring everything together. Once those eggs have mixed a little bit, I'm gonna turn it on and just allow that dough to develop. You can see as it begins to turn, that it collects the dry and mixes it in with the wet, leaving me ultimately with a beautiful textured dough. My fresh pasta dough has turned for about three minutes. And what I have now is a perfectly textured dough. I'll start by flouring the countertop first, just to make sure I don't get anything sticking and so I can work with it. Take the whole bowl off, turn it out on the countertop. This dough hook that's in the, uh, in the food processor makes sh such short work of this and actually does a lot of the kneading for you. So as I bring this together, collect any of those small pieces, I'm just gonna start to knead this dough just a little bit. I don't wanna overwork it. Just really just bringing it together. And the texture is nice and supple. You can see there's a little bit of spring in that. So I'm just gonna work it here just for a moment. And then one of the critical things is to make absolutely certain that you wrap it and then let it rest. That's gonna go into the refrigerator and rest for about 30 minutes. Now that my dough is rested for a good 30 minutes, I want to show you the texture. I'm gonna keep it wrapped in plastic wrap until I use it each time. But look at this dough. It's soft, it's pliable, and it's just beautiful. Now I've got my trusty Cuisinart stand mixer out. And I got this really cool attachment at Home Outfitters. And it allows me to do six different dyes. So let me show you how easy it is to use. First of all, I'm just gonna take off a piece of the dough and roll it into a little bit of a, a small, tiny uh, tube or log. Turning the machine on, watch how cool this is. This is the kind of things you want to do with your kids. As I put it in, it immediately begins to extrude this incredible spaghetti. Now we've done rigatoni, we've done lasagna, we've done fettuccine. The best part is, and you just flour as you go here, what I'm doing is I'm building these cool little nests of fresh pasta. And if I build it into a nest just like this, what I can do is when it's dry, I can drop that right into the boiling water and I'll have perfectly cooked fresh pasta. 
So you can see the versatility is so exciting. You can do just about anything you can imagine. There's literally hundreds of different types of fresh pasta. This is something you have to try. We can't talk pasta without talking sauces. I've got a perfect red tomato sauce and a luxurious cream sauce you'll be calling your own before you know it. Let's start with the cream sauce. First of all, one liter of heavy cream into the pan. And this is going to be a sauce reduction. We're gonna reduce the amount of cream by about 50%, leaving us with a much thicker and much more luxurious texture. Five garlic cloves in, I've just split them and putting them directly in. We're going to use the immersion blender to blend together what will be a poached garlic, a much milder flavor that you're gonna love. Let me set this aside. By the way, don't turn your back on this cream. I'll guarantee it'll boil over. Next, for the red sauce. I'm gonna start with some good extra virgin olive oil. As much as a quarter to a half cup. Now I've got a great selection of vegetables here. The classic mirepoix, and I also have some beautiful mushrooms. Have a quick look at this. Earlier I roasted at 350 degrees this beautiful garlic. One hour, 350 degree, 350 degrees, extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of thyme, salt and pepper, and when this sauce is done, I'm gonna finish it with that garlic. It's gonna be gorgeous. So, in with the onions, the mushrooms, carrots, and you'll notice this celery is a bit leafy. It's because I had the heart of the celery, which has so much flavor. Some people don't like to eat it, but I'm telling you, when you saute it, it's amazing. I'm gonna season this with some salt. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. And some black pepper. I'm gonna saute this until it's golden. And just having a quick check here, the cream sauce is coming up to temperature and it'll begin to reduce shortly. All of these vegetables have sauteed nicely now. I've got this beautiful brown flavor that's developed on the bottom of the pan. To that, I'm gonna add a good heaping tablespoon of tomato paste. And I wanna draw a specific point out here that it's really important for you to cook that tomato paste. It's important to saute it. Because it's raw, you're missing an opportunity to develop a layer of flavor if you don't. And by the way, while I'm at it, this cast iron pan is one of my favorite things to cook in when I'm making this red sauce. Because the cast iron radiates the heat throughout, it gets the job done fast with tremendous results. Now, as I begin to cook that, I'm gonna mix that into all of my veg, and I can smell that tomato paste beginning to cook already. One other thing I wanna share with you, and you can see this, uh, this cream sauce is coming along nicely, bubbling along, poaching that garlic. The one thing I wanna to talk to you about is deglazing. Red wine will deglaze the bottom of the pan, but at the same time, all the character of this red wine all the aging, the oak, all the incredible flavors that are contained in here will now be in your sauce. So deglaze with the red wine. And I'm just going to move that around and wait for the, the mixture to come up a little bit dry, get rid of all the alcohol and leave only what's the best in the bottom. You can see how perfectly reduced that wine is now. It's thick, it's rich and it's ready for some tomatoes. But before we do, a couple of my secrets. Number one, roasted garlic. Look at that gorgeous roasted garlic and watch as it just squeezes into that sauce. I'm telling you, this is spectacular. And you don't have the, the astringency and the bitterness of raw garlic. It's pure, it's well-developed, and it is gorgeous. Into this, I'm gonna put a flavor base of fresh oregano and thyme, tied together so I can pull them out afterwards. I'm tossing in a fresh bay leaf, and also a bay leaf into the cream mixture. Quick wipe. And I've got these gorgeous, uh, I kind of have fallen in love with these diced tomatoes uh, with Italian seasoning from Compliments. 
It's another layer of flavor and really it's the one thing with canned tomatoes, they're, all the bitterness and all of the acidity is gone. Uh, whereas fresh tomatoes, you got to work a little bit to, uh, to get rid of that. So one can of tomatoes and a second. You can see how beautiful that looks already. And I've got a nice well-developed tomato sauce made from Roma tomatoes. I'm going to put that in. Give this a quick stir. Oh man, look at that already. Now one of my other secrets is this. This might find it into your trash can, but it, for me this is always in my refrigerator. It's the rind from the Parmesan. And although you can't really eat it because it's too hard and dry, when you put it in the sauce, it flavors the entire sauce with that beautiful salty Parmesan flavor. It is incredible. This garlic is tender and soft right now, ready to be pureed when we're finished. I'm going to fish this bay leaf out. I don't want to blend that up. Now, we're going to need a lot of black pepper. The reason we need so much black pepper is the richness of the cream will dampen the flavor. So we want to make sure we have that nice richness, but we need a little bit of heat. We're going to put lots of Parmesan in, so we don't need any salt. If you salt this, it'll be incredibly salty. So in goes that beautiful parm. You can put some in the sauce now, and then when you're finishing the dish, finish with some parm as well. One more additive to our red sauce. It's simmering away nicely now. I'm going to leave it anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on how high the heat is. Low heat for a couple hours. Be nice to leave it alone for a little while. Let all those flavors come together and develop nicely. Just gonna give that a quick stir. That one cup or one and a half cups of chicken stock is just gonna take it to a whole other level and you're going to really notice it. Now, I've got a rolling boil here. I wanna to talk to you briefly about the amount that you salt. I wanna show you what it looks like. I've got a large stock pot full with water and coarse salt. This is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna do one, two, three good handfuls. And the reason that we're salting the water is because anything that we don't put into the water now won't get into the pasta when we're cooking it. I've got that beautiful pasta from earlier. Let me start with these beautiful little elbow noodles. In just a minute, this beautiful fresh pasta is already finished. I want to show you how you should look after pasta once it comes out. So it's perfectly cooked. And now with a good extra virgin olive oil, a quick drizzle, not too much, and a little bit of a toss, just so that it's all evenly coated. What happens is some of that starchy pasta water mixes with the olive oil, gives you a bit of an emulsion, and it makes it so the stock or the sauce sticks to it just perfectly. I want to finish up this cream sauce. I'm using an immersion blender because it's going to do a couple things. It's going to completely destroy those garlic, blend them into a milky froth. The other thing is it's going to add a bit of air and by adding air I make a cream sauce just slightly lighter. So watch how this comes together. Be careful you're working with a boiling liquid so make sure you don't lift the immersion blender out of the pot and just move it around a little bit and you can see that starts to come together. You see the aeration. Now it's blending together all the Parmesan, all that poached garlic and thoroughly mixing together this gorgeous cream sauce. This is exactly what the cream sauce should look like just before you finish. A great indication is just to take a piece of bread and as it coats the bread evenly, you know that it's thick enough. The other thing is it makes a great snack. Finishing with just a little bit of butter, a couple tablespoons of butter. Stir that in. It'll make it glossy and it'll make it sheen. That is ready to serve. A big ladle over the fettuccine noodles from earlier and look at that finish. 
That is a beautiful white sauce. Uh, just uh, something to keep in mind, if you're working with both of these sauces, you can make uh, a rosé by putting the two together. It's a beautiful flavor. Uh, it balances the acidity with that cream. I've got some of that perfect, gorgeous garlic spread right on top of that. Makes a perfect accompaniment. Now this red sauce has been developing here and reducing for about an hour and a half. I'm just gonna take a big scoop of this and this is going on to our fresh pasta from earlier. Again, beautiful side dish to this is that lovely crusty bread. And a nice finish is a shot of Parmesan over both. A hit of black pepper. And you have two sauces that you can call your own. I'm gonna show you two kinds of rice. The first is short grain arboreal rice. The second is a long grain jasmine or basmati rice. The difference between the two is the short grain has higher starch content, which makes it perfect for risotto. The long grain is perfect for light and for fluffy rice. Let me show you how to make them. I've sauteed some onions, a fine brunoise, developed a little bit of color to start. I've got one cup of long grain rice going in and a little bit of good extra virgin olive oil. I sauteed the onions in a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon, and what I'm gonna do is turn on a little bit of heat here and I'm gonna work that around first before I add any more of the ingredients, completely coating every single one of those grains. Now that everything is combined, I'm gonna take from our first episode, the bouquet garnier, that's going in, and two cups of that gorgeous chicken stock. A little bit of salt and some pepper. And I'm gonna give this a light stir. The ratio between rice and stock is two to one and that's a rule of thumb for the long grain. I'm gonna cover it and into the oven, 350 degrees for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. Now on to the risotto. I've got a brunoise of yellow onion sauteed until translucent. One cup of that short grain arboreal rice. And again, a good extra virgin olive oil. As this comes up to temperature, I'm going to stir to coat all of those beautiful little gems in the bottom of the pan. And then the key with risotto is that I'm going to stay with it. Rather than just dumping in a specific portion of the stock, I've got hot stock here that I'm gonna ladle in. Ladling in, layering each time checking as it begins to develop, about 18 to 20 minutes to finish it completely. But what I want is I wanna make sure it doesn't go past that point of perfect risotto where there's what they say, a slight tooth to the texture. So in goes the first couple ladles and then I stay with it. Now, as you can see, some of that rich, creamy, Classic risotto sauce is beginning to develop right around those little kernels. I'm gonna add some wine, 250 milliliters, a nice dry wine, and stir that in. I'm gonna let that cook off until it's almost dry. This is the stage you want it to get to before you ladle in more stock. It's almost dried out and we'll just ladle a couple ladles and as we near the end, only a ladle at a time to make sure we get the perfect consistency. This is approaching doneness now. There's a slight tooth. I need at least one more ladle. 
And this is where I'm going to add some of my customized flavors. Risotto is really a blank canvas. In this case, I'm going to use Parmesan. And I'm using the RAS because I love these ribbons. They melt so quickly. And a little bit of lemon to brighten that up. Just using the lemon zest. I can smell that as soon as it hits the surface of the risotto. Now, quick stir. You'll notice I waited to season. The reason that I did that is the Parmesan is very salty to begin with. If I had seasoned it perfectly and then added the Parmesan, I may have a really over-seasoned risotto. Again, we're seeing the bubbles. They develop and it's starting to dry out. I'm gonna use just a little bit more stock. And as I do, I wanna mention that you can, you could add mushrooms to this. You could do a butternut squash risotto. You can do a red wine risotto. Anything you can imagine, you can do with risotto. After a good 19 to 20 minutes, you can see what happens. I part the C and it slowly comes back. It's a perfect indication that this is ready. Let's plate just a little bit of this. I want you to see how creamy and rich that is. Finish with some Parmesan. I love those ribbons. They're so delicate. Beautiful. A little bit of fresh thyme. That's perfect. I'm just gonna try a little bite. Mmm, creamy and rich. Let's check on our rice pilaf. Careful with the pot, the lid. Oh, as soon as that lid comes off, I can smell it. Look at how light and fluffy that is. I can tell you that it's perfectly cooked. All the flavor has come out of that bouquet garnier and gone into the rice. Let me try a little bite. Mm. Mm. Once you make rice this way, you'll never make it another way again. Beautiful, gorgeous, tender gnocchi are as simple as one, two, three. One egg, two cups of flour, and three of these beautiful russet potatoes. Quickly blanched for about 45 minutes until tender. It's great if they're still hot. If they're still hot, it allows me to slice through them and to peel them. You're asking, why did I leave the peel on? Leaving the peel on the potato really improves the flavor. And I made sure that I seasoned that water because I want these potatoes to be perfectly seasoned. Taking the skin off is really simple. It's one extra step that you can do afterwards. You just need to let the potatoes cool just slightly. With the cutting blade in my Cuisinart food processor, I want it to break this up. I don't want to develop the glutens. I want to, to cut through and develop a really nice, light, airy dough. This is very similar to pasta dough. So I've got two cups of flour going in. And I've got some beautiful fresh thyme. I'm just going to pull some of those thyme leaves off directly in. The fresh thyme is just going to elevate it. As I mix it through, all of that is going to become incorporated throughout the entire dough. It's absolutely perfect match with the uh, gnocchi, especially with the brown butter when we saute it. I've got a tablespoon of mascarpone, and that's for richness. And like I said, one egg, egg in. Now let's start to bring this batter together. Pulse a couple times first. Every time I pulse, the ingredients fall down to the center. And now I'm just going to turn it on and let that dough come together. You can see as it begins to form, there's plenty of moisture in those potatoes. So what's happening is as the potato breaks down, I've got this gorgeous dough that's starting to form and you can see it's just that fast. Now that my gnocchi dough has come together nicely, you can see the texture of it. It's light, it's warm, it's 
absolutely beautiful. I wanna make sure I add some flour as I go, just not too much. So I'm lightly working this, and as I do, I'm slightly developing the glutens. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And I'm just going to slice off a piece, and I'm gonna slice it in half again. I wanna work with a manageable size. Just make certain that I've got no sticky ends. And by the way, you may need to adjust recipes depending on the humidity of the potatoes, where you're cooking it, and all the ingredients. It's a good idea not to be frustrated by results. If you have a sticky dough, then you need to add more flour. If you have a very dry dough, you could add a bit more egg. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work this, and I'm rolling it into a tube that's about three quarter inches in diameter, about the size of this wooden spoon. This is a great thing for the kids. The kids love making these, and it's so simple. You saw how fast it was and how quickly it came together. And as I get down to the end, I'm gonna cut off bite-sized pieces. And just a little flick, just dipping the knife in a little bit of flour and a little bit of a flick as I go, just to separate the dough. We want that nice moisture to still be present. Gives it great uh, texture. When we pan fry it, we want it crispy on the outside, but still nice and tender on the inside. Then all you do is just press a little dimple in each. You can use a fork if you like. I've seen these done in Italy, and it's, uh, it's just a little press little press, and then those will carefully transfer them onto a plate, allow them to dry just slightly. I've got a rolling boil going behind me. We're gonna drop those in and blanch them. When they float to the top, they're ready to go. In go the gnocchi. Careful not to splash yourself. Just gonna roll these in. Give them a quick stir, just to make sure they don't stick together. They'll be done in about 60 seconds. The way that I know they're done is they'll float to the top. While they're cooking, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of butter to my pan, turn up that heat. I'm making a brown butter sauce really for these, so that's why I need so much butter. I wanna add a bit more thyme. The flavor of this thyme when, as it crisps up will be incredible. See my butter's are already started to uh, melt, the fragrance coming from that. You can hear the little pops from the thyme and it's just smelling incredible. Another quick stir here. Oh, I can see them. They begin to puff up. So as they puff up, you know that they're cooking. Now, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to raise the smoke point. The gnocchi have floated to the top now and they're gonna go directly into this pan. Look at that. They're just, they're like little pillows of potato and marscapone beauty. I'm gonna saute those for a couple minutes until they're nice and crispy on both sides. One quick toss. Oh, and look at how those have crisped up. A little bit of salt, finished with just a tiny bit of pepper. And those. <laughs> Perfect.